Big money patent verdicts and patent portfolio sales make news, and have for over a century. And they should make news. Statistics show that these large valuations are unusual, and therefore newsworthy. Any discussion of the valuation of a particular patent, or a portfolio of patents, should include what courts actually award in patent infringement cases. Ultimately, a patent is worth what a court might award in damages. While large damage awards are newsworthy, one must take into account the cost of bringing a patent lawsuit, too. There are at least two sources of statistics on patent damage awards and litigation costs. The Price Waterhouse Cooper's annual patent litigation study addresses court awards, and the American Intellectual Property Law Association does a survey which addresses costs. Price Waterhouse Coopers, or PwC, has done the intellectual property community a real service with its annual report. PwC has been tracking patent damage awards for years and presents an annual survey which is available online for free. This video is based on its report published in 2012. Here's a chart showing the top 10 damage awards. The PwC report notes that these damages were awarded at the trial court level. The damage awards are frequently reduced and even eliminated when the case goes up for appeal. What's noticeable are that there are only two billion dollar judgments. The numbers drop rapidly after that. When one considers the sheer number of patent cases filed every year, it's easy to see that not all patent owners are actually winning large verdicts in court. Of course, the overwhelming majority of cases settle in patent law, as in other types of law. More on that in a moment. This chart shows the median award for patent holders who bring a patent lawsuit to judgment. Recall that the median is the award number, where one half the judgments are higher and one half the judgments are lower. Look carefully at the numbers. Between 2006 and 2011, half of the patent cases filed, which did not settle, were awarded less than $4 million. And patent owners didn't win all of the time. Patent owner success rates are high, on the order of 70%. Nonetheless, patent owners do lose. Taking these statistics into account, a patent owner must understand that it has a 70% chance of winning, assuming the case itself is reasonably good, but that it will end up with a damage award of less than $4 million in half the cases. PwC breaks these awards up by industry segment too. Again, look closely at the numbers. Telecommunications patents, cell phones and the like, are awarded the highest median damages. Perhaps because at this juncture in time, these products enjoy a very high profit margin. Still, the median award is around $30 million. That's higher than the overall median of $4 million, but far short of the billion dollar awards that make the news. The PwC report is loaded with great statistics and commentary, and well worth downloading for review. Note that the PwC reports only patent damage awards. Those damages frequently are based on infringing activities up to the end of the trial. Running royalties into the future may also be awarded, or settle on, after the case ends and can be very large. Of course, the infringer may be able to redesign its products to avoid infringement, and they often do during the pendency of a trial. The PwC report also does not report on license agreements that are reached outside of court or prior to trial. Those royalties can be very large. Tens of millions a year is not uncommon. However, one should understand that even those numbers are negotiated, in part, on the basis of what the patent owner might win in court. Now that we've seen how much patent owners win in court, what about the costs? The AIPLA does an annual survey that is widely cited. The report itself is available but costs money. Because it is widely cited, though, one can find some of the more critical numbers in other sources. In 2011, the AIPLA reported the following costs associated with patent lawsuits. The numbers are broken down by the amount in controversy and through the end of discovery and through the trial. Discovery is the portion of the proceeding before the trial where the parties engage in fact-finding with each other, exchanging documents and taking depositions and the like. Many cases settle during this process, as the facts that will be presented at trial become more clear. These numbers are widely regarded as low. The survey is based on voluntary submission by members of the AIPLA. Few companies want to report these costs publicly, and those who do are likely the ones that have lower litigation costs. In practice, it's common to find companies spending a million dollars a month during the pendency of a patent case, which run about two years in most cases. Nonetheless, these numbers show that patent suits are not cheap. If one is seeking more than $25 million in damages, then the cost might be $6 million at the low end. 
given that the patent owners lose the entire case 30% of the time, this is a risky proposition. Further, half the cases filed generate less than $4 million in damage awards. That makes half the cases that are brought and won by patent owners a losing proposition. Two quick notes to finish off this video. One on market share lawsuits and another on patent trolls. Some patent lawsuits are not about receiving large damage awards. They're about preserving market share, which itself is worth money. Patent owners get a limited monopoly on their claimed invention. The patent owner can choose to use the patent to exclude others from the marketplace and keep the market to themselves. Many companies do that, most notably pharmaceutical manufacturers. This type of patent owner wants to have control of the market for the term of the patent. To the extent that an infringer exists, their goal is to stop the infringement. Those lawsuits will often involve a damage award too, for lost profits on lost sales and the like. However, the primary goal is not to license the infringer, but to remove them from the marketplace. Other patent owners are willing to license their inventions to others. Universities, for example, are typically more than willing to grant licenses to allow their research to be put to use. Universities do not make products or sell services, typically. Operating companies may choose to license their patents for any number of reasons. Perhaps the invention is not in its core product line, or they simply do not have the capacity to meet market demand. Finally, a quick note on patent trolls. It's hard not to join in this lively debate as to who is a troll and who is not. One way to look at it is to focus on the AIPLA statistics. To defend oneself from a patent infringement action is going to cost at least on the order of a million dollars. Trolls know this. They sue and seek to settle for amounts that are far below this cost of defense. While I cannot cite a study, my experience is that they often seek on the order of $200,000 to settle. They make money by suing lots of companies and settling, with no real intention of going to trial. This practice has been common for decades with ambulance chasing personal injury attorneys and has only recently become common in the patent business. Often, not only are their infringement cases weak, but the settlement amount so low as compared to the cost that it's hard for a company to justify defending itself vigorously. Congress, the Patent Office, and the courts are trying to address this issue with various degrees of success. The debate will continue on for years, as it has in other areas of law. In short, patents are worth money. Patents are great for protecting market share. Patents can also generate reasonable damage awards. However, keep in mind that the popular press reports the newsworthy awards. The median award, half above and half below, is only $4 million. I hope this helps, and thanks for watching.